Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. My name is Scott Carson, as always. I'm excited to be here with you today on the Note Closer Show podcast. And I want to give a big shout out to all of our listeners, not only those that listen to uh, the show any, anywhere that podcasts are at, but our online video listeners on YouTube, Facebook, and our uh, growing <laughs> a growing list of listeners on our different uh, AM, FM radio stations across the country. Note Nation, thank you so much for listening. Thank you to our international listeners as well. We are honored, as always, to provide quality content and information to help you on your journey as a real estate and note investor. Well, today's topic, today's episode is kind of garnered towards, uh, you know, where's the work ethic these days? And I'm sure many of you uh, will agree with me on this, that good people are hard to find. Now, I'm not talking about assistance because you can often find assistance on VAs and things like that. I'm literally talking down to entrepreneurs or talking about entrepreneurs, I should say, who sign up for something. And we see this in the in the real estate industry, especially when you're an educator like me. I mean, I have two facets in my business. I have the note business and we have the real estate stuff that runs that way. Then separately, we have our education business obviously. And I guess I would kind of throw the podcast under the education business the side of our business as well, although it's kind of a separate entity. But still, uh, it's funny. It's not really funny. It's downright depressing sometimes that as an educator, I talk with a lot of my peers on a regular basis. I go to different masterminds and, we, you know, there's different marketing things that I go to to help us increase our conversion ratios on emails and getting people into our funnels and getting people taught. Because I really do value and enjoy teaching people on the note business because nobody's teaching the things that we do on a regular basis. Nobody's teaching how, how to, from A to Z, your nuts and bolts kind of basic training when it comes to buying and, and investing in distressed debt. And what it is, it, and we've seen this, is if you teach, here's just the numbers. Let me just throw some numbers out there. So if you go speak in front of an audience somewhere, usually a paid audience, I'm talking by paid, if you go to speak in front of a, a group like a meetup group or a real estate investment club meeting or something like that, or a conference that's a paid attendee, people are paid to are paying to be there. And I don't care if it's 20 bucks to go to a, a real club meeting on a Monday night where they're paying a couple hundred bucks to, or a thousand bucks to go to a conference. Those that pay to attend are much higher responsive audience than those that are free because free is no value. Free I always like to say, you get the prize pigs that show up to a free event. People that aren't have no investment, they're there for the prizes. <clears throat> Very few of them are there going to pull the trigger because they <clears throat> they themselves have no investment in the event. So it makes it really for a, a really a bad event for somebody like me or the people that are speaking who are flying across country or showing up, taking time from our weekend to be an event or being a vendor at an event that costs us thousands of dollars. Either we want to deal with a with high target audience. <coughs> Well, um, give you some numbers. So if I, if I go to a real club meeting and speak in front of a real club meeting or a meetup group or something like that, I expect to sell somewhere between 30 to 40% of the room. That's as far as principles. Now, if you take 100 people, <coughs> but that's made up of entirely of husbands and wives, well, that's 50 principles. So 30% of that would be roughly 16 sales, okay, which is great. Hey, it's not a bad hour or two hours, especially if you fly out or somewhere close. It's kind of a, a good thing. Now, let me keep in mind is out of that bunch, you'll probably you go to a workshop. You probably have only, you know, you would love to say 20% of people that would do something. But when it comes down to a lot of people sign up for stuff, they never take action. And we're all guilty of this, whether it's signing up for software or using an app or signing up for the gym membership or signing up for dance lessons or whatever. A lot of us never complete things that we sign up for. And some people especially in the real estate niche, a lot of people will sign up for stuff that they never accomplish or never, you know, when they sign up for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back events or trainings, they often will never complete it or give seeds um, or the things they learn time enough to germinate to show real results. And we're seeing that on a regular basis. Look, no investing is not the easiest thing. I'll be the first one to tell you. It's not the easiest niche to dive into. I mean, you could wholesale, you could, you know, put out bandit signs, you could send the yellow letters out. You try to track down foreclosure lists, you could try to track down the zone zoning departments or the code enforcement office offices and reach out for deals in your local areas. No investing is not a really not a, a local event, especially not for me here in Austin, Texas. It's an event that's outside of Texas for the most part. And that's why I tell people all the time, listen, if you're looking for deals, 
in the note business for cash flow, you really need to look outside of Texas for the most part and go that route. Just because of the faster foreclosure timeframes here, especially if you look at other states like California, Nevada, Arizona, so if you're looking for deals in those states, you need to be looking somewhere else. And the opposite goes for New York. If you're looking for stuff in New York, you've got to be almost kind of crazy because the fact that it can take you a year or two years to foreclose there, especially longer than a year, 18 to 20, or sometimes 36 months. So that's one thing. And it's not a, hey, I'm going to buy this property and instantly turn around and sell it in 90 days for a profit. This is not a get rich quick type of investment thing. This is not where, hey, I'm going to wholesale something and make five grand. Now, yes, you can wholesale notes like in a real estate property, but it's a different type of animal because you have a lot of different moving factors in this deal. You have a lot of moving numbers. You have different things you've got to look at in your due diligence that aren't just, hey, let's go look at the property, pull comps and see what kind of repairs it needs. You, you have a whole, I guess you could say wild card to it when you've got borrowers involved. But anyway, getting back to my main point, only about 10% of people will actually take action and do anything. And what does that mean? Well, in some places, 10% 10 people, 10 of people will actually, you know, put what they learn to work. That's the first thing. If they learn something, how many will put it to work in the first 24 to 48 hours? Or let's just give them the first week to start implementing their plan. And then when I was a, a real estate coach, uh, back over a decade ago now, I used to travel out and spend four days with people, Monday through Thursday, or sometimes Tuesday through Friday, and spend four days with them kicking their butt, getting them ready, and getting them to start making offers or to send out things. And there was always homework involved along the way for people. Now, what do I mean by homework? Well, the homework involved was something that was simple as like, hey, get your lists together. What are you marketing to? You know, if you're going to be sending out to a foreclosure list, let's get your letters out or your marketing out or postcards out the week before I arrive, especially by the Thursday before I come in. That way, phone calls start coming in when I'm there and I can get the biggest bang for buck out of my four days with you. Now, I'd show up a lot of times people have not done any of their homework. So we spent the first day or two getting their marketing out and it was just a waste because nobody would call by the time I was leaving on Thursday. So we had to improvise and get them to do things, go door knocking or to pull other lists or to start dialing for dollars. What's up? And if you have me there kicking your butt for four days, you better watch out. It's intense four days. As somebody will tell you <laughs> when I used to go out and do that many times, like Thursday afternoon, they're like, Hey, you got to leave. You got, you got to go. I can't handle you on my butt for four days to keep, keep me going. And I'm like, well, you've got to set these things up to be effective. You've got to actually put the work in. You've got to put the work ethic in. What did you, what did you do this last week? Oh, I just kind of took it easy. Well, okay, well, did you, did you work? Yeah, I worked. Well, what'd you do between 7 p.m. and midnight? Well, I just kind of chilled. Well, there's plenty of time to put work into this. And look, look I'll be the first one to say, hey, we all drift. As our good friend Sharon Lecter is notorious for saying people drift out there and, and we all do everybody does i do but the thing is to know when you are drifting so that you can correct it and come on back in and try to fix it as best you can okay not the easiest thing to do but the thing comes down to this too that if you're going to invest in something that's i always tell people if they're going to sign up for our no blind buying blueprint please have a work ethic please understand that you have to go a b c d before you get to z and a lot of people just want to go to Z. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. You mess up because you don't know the A, B, C, D. All right. You don't even know what the Z is because you're just going to think of it and try to apply what you've learned as a real estate investor or learn from somebody else's class and try to apply it to the note business. That's not the case. It doesn't work. Now, the thing that really frustrates me more than anything else in this industry, and I say this really, actually, I'm going to say this not in just this industry, but as real estate investing as a whole is the amount of people that never take action. That really drives me bonkers. That really just irritates the crap out of me. Or people that sign up for something and they're like, oh, it didn't work for me. Or it doesn't work. Well, it didn't work for you because you didn't take action. And with, especially right now, if you're listening to this, it's the first part of November as we record this. It's a prime time to start looking into your marketing. I mean, you gotta be more, I mean, what, what reason? How do you find notes? You market all the time. I mean, I'm not joking. From the marketing I've done, from when I taught my uh, workshop the first week of September, I've made six new sources. Six, seis, all right? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Seis, six new leads that have turned into four tapes. I got one this morning, actually, sent from a source that I've been going back and forth on LinkedIn for over two months now. Yes. 
since September and through October, two months, she sent it less than two months, right at the two month mark from when I originally contacted her on LinkedIn, okay? And that's the thing that gets me is that most people, two months, people would give up on that also. Well, I followed up with her, just gently followed up with her, followed up with an email. I, I, I know I touched base with her at least five times. Intro email, intro message on LinkedIn connected with her. So a follow-up message on LinkedIn because she said she was just starting as a special asset manager to give her a week. So I followed back up that, that week. I then sent her an email and then I followed up with another email to her and she sent me a list last week. And that's the great, I mean, last Friday, I didn't see it till this morning when I walked in the office, but anyway, it's got performing notes, but also non-performing notes on it and there's color. And we've exchanged emails back and forth this morning about this to get a little bit of idea on the discount and, you know, pricing and, and what they're looking for in that back and forth aspect. But that's two months of at least six contacts and 80% of sales, are made after the fifth contact, okay? If you're listening to this and you've never heard me say that before, you must be new because 80% of sales are made of a fifth contact. And that's the biggest thing is that you can sit here and tell people, hey, it's gonna take you to make this many phone calls, it's gonna take you to make this many reach outs, it's make you make this many contacts to have that, have your marketing work effectively for you. And what's, what's sad is then people like, they don't wanna do their work, they just wanna be given the lead, they wanna be given the stuff. and you know, what's, what's funny is we've done that too. You know, as people come into our mastermind or come in for the one-on-one -on -one coaching or fast track training, hey, here's a list of asset managers. Here's 5,000 asset managers for you. Here's, you know, here's 3,000 um, asset managers and mortgage bankers from the Texas Savings and Mortgage Lending Department. So here's 286 servicers for you to reach out to. Okay, they, they have plenty of clients that are looking to get rid of assets. Oh, hey, here's a list of, entities, over 9,000 entities that bought or sold notes in their last year in one of the hottest counties in America. You think you could reach out and find some sources from that. But most people don't have the work ethic. Most people, and I think we have to blame a lot on the phones these days. People are a little hesitant to pick up the phone and dial for dollars. People are hesitant to reach out and call somebody and leave a one-on-one -on -one message. I mean, that was one of the funnest things when we were, uh, we just did our, our virtual mastermind in October and that's what I did on a Saturday. I made a bunch of phone calls to entities in front of everybody, recorded it live and showed them, you know, Saturday is not the best time to be phone call, but still made contact with people. Still was able to get a hold of people. Still was able to really communicate with people that had bought notes and sold notes and got several lists from it. But people, especially though, most people think this is an easy overnight success. And those that are successful in this industry will tell you it's not an overnight success by any means of the imagination. Now it may seem like it's easy because I will show people easily how to pull information, how to, how to jump on LinkedIn, how to use lead fuse, how to I'll use Octopus, how to use some of these other services, you know, how to use MailChimp to send email blast out. And you have to realize it takes follow-up, follow-up, sending just an email. You know, it's not like just send it and forget it. <laughs> I was reading emails from somebody today who said they're going in a different direction. And I'm like, you've barely been a student for like 90 days. Why are you going in a different direction? Why? And, and I asked them, they go, oh, I want to go this route. I'm like, why are you going to the most difficult aspect of things when you've never taken a class on that aspect, on that niche? Um, why are you doing that to yourself? You're bouncing from one thing to another, to another, to another. And what happens is we see a repeat a repeat bounce kind of thing. You know what I mean by that? Not a bad email bounce. And I want you to think about this because I think everybody bounces around. We've drifted from one thing subject to another. And uh, uh, you know, when I used to coach, there were people that would be going and signing up for this master's in real estate investing education. And they would go from workshop to workshop to workshop. And then they would, as I say, bounce from one workshop to workshop, but they would never have time to implement anything before they went to a new workshop to try to go to another one. Or they would, you know, send out leads or marketing, but they would never have time to go back and work those leads that came in from that. Oh, I can't call it because I got to go to the next workshop this weekend. I got to get my master's in real estate education, investing. And I'm like, what the heck is that? You look, those classes will be there. If you're going to be focused on something, try to do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do your checkbook, your credit card a favor. What I mean by that? Well, it, actually use what you've paid for and attended. Take some time before signing up for something else to actually implement and do the things that need to be done. Now, what I always laugh about is when people come through a training, like, oh, I don't think it's for me. Okay, 
You don't think that the marketing that we talk about doing on a daily basis, weekly basis, is going to benefit you in any way. And it does. I'm not talking about me sending an email blast out daily to people. I'm talking about is people learning how to market effectively in the 21st century. Okay. Yes. Scotty's here to beam you up. I'm giving her all she's got captain. What people don't do is they will not take the time to put things in place and realize that there is specific things that need to do on a regular basis and go from there. So let me, let me let's throw these numbers out. All right. So if you are, let's just say you want to have a hundred asset managers in a 12 month period. This is a, the first goal that I ever set for myself is I want to have a hundred asset managers that I would reach out to in a, in a year. And I thought that would be a big number back over a decade ago. Now that's a very easy number now, but how do you get about doing it? Well, you go by a couple of things. One, you can A, go to the Texas Savings and Mortgage Lending Department online and download the list of licensed mortgage bankers and loan servicers. That's a list or mortgage companies. That's about 23, maybe 3,200 names. Maybe not names, but company names, emails, phone numbers, and dial for dollars. Oh my gosh, you mean I have to actually work? There's not an app that'll do that for me? And I'm like, unfortunately not. I mean, you can download the app and send an email blast out to them, but your most effective thing is gonna be following up and following, because you're only gonna have roughly about a 20% a open rate. And that's gonna be a really good one with asset managers. Usually it's somewhere between 15, nine and 15%, depending on the time of year. Now, anytime around major holidays, major holidays being like New Year's, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you've gotta be very uh, deliberate in your email blasts and when you send them out. I mean, I'm in the big habit of, you might as well just turn into a year round email blast that goes out every first Tuesday of the month, provided doesn't fall on a major holiday, and just follow up with those people. Those that open the email, great. Those that didn't open the email, send a follow up email. You really only have to write about 12, actually let me take that back, 24 emails. And what I mean by 24 emails? Well, you write 24 emails. The first email goes out, boom, you're gonna get nine to 15% of people to open that email from your list, okay? You send the same email out a couple days later, same exact email to those that didn't open the first email. Why do you send the exact same email? Because they didn't read the first time and you only will see about a three to 6% open rate the second time around you send it, but you send it at opposite time of the day. If you send it in the morning, on the Tuesday, you send it in the afternoon on a Thursday or vice versa, you send it afternoon, on a Tuesday, you send it in the morning on a Thursday. Okay, well that's half your meals, one a month, okay? The second set of 12 emails is gonna go out to those that opened your email and send it the following week. Hey, thanks for opening my email last week. I'd love to set up a phone call with you to see what you have on your books. Very, very simple thing. And you know the beautiful thing, if you use like MailChimp, Infusionsoft, some sort of CRM tool, you can basically pre-write those emails and pre-set up your systems so that it's done almost on an automatic basis. And then all you've gotta do is the real four letter word. The real four letter word, and most people are very scared of, is work. What do I mean by work? Well, that means dialing for dollars. That means pick up the phone and call them. It means pick up the phone and just leaving a message. You know, I used to make 50 phone calls in a day. I got to 100 phone calls in a day. On a really good day, I could still knock those out. But that's the magic word. That's the doing the extra 5% that most people won't do. Most people just want to send an email blast out. Oh, it's not, I don't have time to make phone calls. I'm too busy being something else. And that's fine. If you don't have time to make phone calls during the day because you are working at a job, that's fine. There's other ways to do it. What do you mean, Scott Carson? What, are there, what do you mean there are other ways to do it? Well, you can A, do a voice blast where it gets delivered to their inbox. That's an easy thing to do that if you don't have the time to make phone calls, just do a voice where it leaves a voicemail. Oh, Scott, well that goes to a lot of, that's only if I have their cell phone it will work. What if they have a landline? Well then do this. If you see that they're open their email, then just send a follow-up email to them and say, hey, thanks for reaching out. Let's pick up a time to call next week. And you pick one afternoon or pick one, you know, a couple hours and you set up, you know, 15 minutes time slots to talk with those people. You know, you do it after hours or before hours. I mean, you look at what your time is at and what time zone they're in and just start 
plotting those times. Maybe you take your lunch break each day to do that. Okay, Monday through Thursday, or you do it in the afternoons. You know what I would do then? I would jump on LinkedIn and, and find those people. If they communicated and contacted you back and you saw the open, then go to LinkedIn and reach out to them directly. Or you know what? <sighs> do yourself a favor and send them a little short video, a one minute video if you get their phone number, okay? Or a short, record a one minute video or two minute video talking about what you're looking for, upload it to YouTube, and then send an email blast out to those people that open your email. Say, hey, thanks for opening my email. Just wanted to follow up with you. This is me. This is what I'm looking for. I'd love to talk with you. See if you have anything in your books that you're looking to get rid of. Now, that, that's the hardest thing. Most people will set up the systems. Oh, I got an email list. I don't do any work. I don't do any phone calls. Business is still based on talking to people. A lot of people want to get away with doing it virtually. And this lady that sent me a list, yeah, I haven't had to talk to her personally. I think I left a voicemail originally, but you still are going to get more, more honey, okay? You'll catch more flies the more honey you put out. Now, if you don't put any honey out or you only do one thing and you expect it to rain, okay? If you, you, know, you do one email blast out and you expect, oh, I'm going to have millions of people send me lists and the first time I send it out, that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. You have to realize that work, okay, is doing more than what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is sitting back. They might send an email blast out to the market list. They might do that stuff. And eh, great. Good for them. But what most people won't do is that little extra bit. Well, let me reach out to this person on LinkedIn or let me see if they're on LinkedIn or send them a phone call or leave a voice message or send a video. These little things that we talk about will separate you from the crowd or creating, you know, here's another thing. Creating a calendar link where they can schedule time on their own. I mean, maybe you want to have them call you during the day. So maybe you open your calendar links because you, you have a job that you can step away from for 15 or 20 minutes while you're talking to asset managers at your job or you're taking breaks or you work from home. Okay. That's a smart thing to do is set these systems up. But most people, we have shiny object syndrome, squirrel syndrome. What? You know what I mean? <laughs> we want to chase the shiny object syndrome. And I saw this happen in after note camp, our note camp commercial we did back in July, people were excited about it. Commercial notes, yay. And they started chasing things. And they start, people started calling me, hey, I, got, I want to chase self-storage. That's great. What are you doing to track lists? Are you reaching out to asset managers? Are you going to take a class from like Scott Myers or Investors in Action, my friends, Terry, uh, Terry Garner and Aaliyah Ott Carter? Can you take one of them? so that you're actually learning to do what you're doing. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, what the hell? Oh, I've been a realtor for two years, or I fixed it and flipped a couple of homes. It's got to be the same thing. And it's the biggest thing that just is <laughs> downright depressing, everybody. I mean, sometimes it feels like you're just shooting blanks at people. They don't seem to get it. And they're running around with a chicken head cut off, trying to find something that's ease and People are inherently lazy. And as I like to say, if it was easy, everybody would do this. And that's one of the biggest things is I've always tried to say this to people. And I, I believe I've always said, hey, this is not the easiest thing. If it was, everybody would be doing it. It's not the easiest thing. You're going to have delays. You're going to have deals get delayed in funding. You're going to have people walk. You're going to have tapes pulled. You're going to have assets that you do some due diligence on that turn out to be crap. Welcome to the club. All right. Work is a four letter word for many people. Most people don't have a work ethic. They don't understand that what it takes that they've got to put in extra hours that so you, even if they're working a full-time job, they got to come home, spend some hours doing it. They've got to put some things aside. And a lot of people have to, a tough time this time of year, putting football aside, like the football, whether it's college or pro or Monday night football, putting things aside that they, you know, that would then taking that time to put the work in. Now, I was driving um, recently down to San Antonio a couple weeks ago for an evening thing and drove back the same night. I, was, I drove past uh, Cibolo. Uh, Cibolo is south part of San Marcos, north part of San Antonio, actually Cibolo Shirts area. And I worked down this area when I was growing up, or I should say going to college, because I went to school at Southwest Texas State University, Gil Bobcats, they're now Texas State University. Uh, in San Marcos, and I worked at a place called the Grist Mill. And as, as I was working through not only my undergrad, but also 
actually this is more for my master's when I was going back for my master's. Um, I would make the drive from Austin to San Marcos two, three nights a week for my MBA. And one of the classes we took was on, uh, we had to pl put a plan together. And this guy put this plan together for the strip mall. It was like four unit strip mall in a really nice desirable area off of I-35. I-35 is a highway. It runs basically from Laredo all the way through Texas. And it splits Austin, you know, right down the middle here. And he was talking about this great plan. I was like, that's a really good business model. If you've got this, this, and this, that's a great business model. And the actual professor knew that I was in real estate and asked me, he actually said, hey, Scott, do you want to take a look at this? Or would you like to comment on it? Because you have more experience than all of us, myself included, and the others in the class. And I said, yeah. So I commented on the guy and said, hey, and he, this guy worked uh, for, it was an administrator or not an executive, but, it, you know, in management of malls, Simon Malls, if I remember correctly. And I mentioned to him, I said, hey, if you really like this, I can put you in touch with some of the people that I'm, some of my network, who can help make this happen, who can really do this, because this is a great plan. And you know what the guy said? He goes, thanks, but no thanks. I'm like, what do you mean no thanks? He goes, I'm happy living my life, being able to play with my kids every day and coach their little league and do those things. Now, I'm not saying being an active dad is a bad thing. I'm not. But this guy was making like 45, 50 grand a year. And he was settling for his lack of, he was settling early on. Now, this is, this is going back, if I look at this, this is when I was in my, golly, I wasn't divorced yet. So I was like 28, I think, I, yes, 27, 28. And this guy was maybe in his early 30s. And he's like, yeah, I just want to get my MBA because then I can move up to an executive a management level in my company and, and I'll be good there. I'll be happy with that, their lifestyle. I was like, wow. Wow. I mean, I said, this wouldn't take a lot of work on your part. There are people that would be gladly to come in and give you a piece of the deal or, or stuff. And he's like, no, I'm not interested. I honestly don't want to do that. I want to settle. Those are the exact words. And that's a sad thing is now if you're in a spot, you're happy, you're, con you're content, settling, okay, I mean, I'll be a bad thing. And I tell people that all the time. Hey, if you're happy doing what you're doing, kudos to you. Good stuff. But I know many people want more in their life. And more is also a four-letter word, okay? Because if you want to get more out of life, the two there's two letters in more and work that they share in common. It's all about the ors. Or. And what is or? You're making a decision. I'm going to do some extra work or I'm going to settle. I want to get more out of life or I just want to settle. Or is a word uh, that most people don't want to deal with. They would rather have it just be spoon fed to them. They would be give it to them. They don't want to spend the extra time. They don't want to take, a, take away from their nights of playing in the bowling league. I had a buddy who was, couldn't pay his bills on time, but he's always in a bowling league. And I was like, you're going there and spending money on bowling and other things and you can't pay your bills can't pay your rent. Something is wrong. You have to make a choice. It's either got to be once you get a job or quit your bowling thing. And he didn't want to deal with it. So if you're out there and you're listening to this right now, I'm going to tell you right now, note investing is not the easiest thing. Note investing can be very profitable. Note investing can change your life if you do it right. I mean, we have helped so many people change their lives in so many great ways out there and helped really change America, as I say, one distressed, no, one distressed borrower at a time. Because we teach you how to do the things that you need to do. We teach you the systems. We teach you what you need to put in place. We need to teach you that, A, actually, you have to market. Just because you have a list of asset managers, just because you know what goes on in states and foreclosure time, and just because you're educated does not mean anything these days. You could be the most talented, educated person. You could be a brain surgeon, take all the classes to be the brain surgeon, but if you've never picked up a scalpel and went to work, that education is worthless. That time spent is worthless. Going to classes and going all that stuff, spend all that money. You know, there's so many people that I, I talk to that, oh, I got a degree and, and it's worthless because I just, I wasn't serious about what I was going to school. I almost discovered that, especially my 
junior year of school, I transferred schools. I quit playing football after taking a year off and I almost failed out of college and transferred into a new university. I almost failed out if I didn't take it serious. And I was like, whoa, this is my money. I need to take things seriously. And ultimately, we, everybody is responsible for their own path in life. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. It's, it, or anybody else out there, you are responsible for where you're at. I am responsible for where I'm at. the actions and decisions that I've made have led to where I'm at currently. And I'm responsible for things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You have to start taking to being accountable to yourself that you're not putting in the things. If I want to close more deals, you know what I have to do? I've got to work more. I have to market more. I have to send more emails out. I have to spend time at night connected with LinkedIn asset managers. I need to do more. There's that OR, okay? All right. Think about it, people. Most people won't do the extra. Most people won't do that little bit extra. They want to do what everybody else is doing. That drives me bonkers. That drives me crazy out there. When I see people do that, then they turn around and want to blame others. Oh, I no, it was not what I thought it was going to be. What do you think it was going to be? Sitting around and eating bonbons on your ass all day? You're going to be like Paige Bundy sitting on there in stretchy pants just from the couch watching Oprah? Look, the note business takes work. It takes work to market. It takes work to reach out to people. It takes work to do your due diligence. It takes work to hire a servicing company and attorneys to handle out that stuff. It takes work filing collateral files. It takes work. It takes systems. It takes time. It takes time and you've got to put the work in to see the results. I mean, if we had to rely on most people these days to replace our farmers for food, all of us would starve to death. Okay. Or if we had to learn how to walk again as an adult, most people would just give up. Most people would give up. They would be paraplegics sitting around in a wheelchair. Oh, well, it's hard. I don't want to hurt. I might break a sweat. I might fall down and hurt my knee. Oh, I might scab myself. Oh, I might get a bruise. Oh, I might get my finger. Might hit my finger with a hammer. I can't do that. Can't. Never got anything done. Well, you can or you can't. It's up to you, everybody out there. And so that's the, the thing, you know, this episode, that's the thing I really want you guys to look at is look at what are you doing on a daily basis? That little bit extra, that 5% more. What's that 5% more that you're doing? Or are you doing something else? Think about it. Work means more. Work or not work. Chill. Or work. If your dreams are big and your comfort comfort zone starts to really come around, that's the thing. People will not move outside of their comfort zone unless they're forced to do something. By force means either death, starvation, or some other stress comes to. Most people won't do things. I, I know one investor right now in San Antonio, in Houston who just rolled over and basically gave it up. <sighs> I'm lazy. You know, and I, t- I referred to, uh, to this uh, about this about the tale of two note investors a while back. Um, I, I, it's just the guy just gave up. He just literally gave up. I don't want to do the work anymore. I don't want to follow up. I don't want to attend the real club meetings anymore. I really just want somebody to give me a, a flat hourly wage and I'll do what they tell me to do. I don't want to be accountable to myself. I don't want to be accountable to my girlfriend or my fiance. I don't remember. I doubt, hopefully they're not engaged because if that's the case, she's in for trouble, uh, a world of trouble later on in life is she's the bread earner and he's not really going to do anything. He's not going to step up to the podium to help out. He's not going to step, make, step up to his opportunity to do something different with his life. He's just going to be a lazy ass. And you tell a lot of people, t- tell a lot about people by what they do. What do they do in their spare time? What do they do in their lives outside of the nine to five? You know, if they've got a family, great. Are they get, accomplishing the things they want to do? Are they working towards their goals? If you're not, okay, it's still the best country in the world to do something. It's still a great place for you to go out and do something. I mean, all you've got to do is travel abroad at some point and realize how lucky we are here in the United States or go someplace 
uh, where the people aren't as lucky as us. I mean, you look at the borders, people are dying to get in the United States from El Salvador and Europe and things like that. People are looking from Mexico are looking to get here. You know, we are such a wealthy com country of so many opportunities. I mean, you can go to the Khan Academy online, you'll learn things. You can go to lynda.com to download trading programs, all the hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there. It takes work. It takes work. I see a lot of this happening in podcasting where you have a lot of pod fade, where 80% of people aren't, haven't produced something new in their episodes in the last six months. It takes work. It takes you showing up. And that's what note investing is all about. You've got to show up. You've got to keep following up with this deals. Look, I didn't close on my first note deal. It took me over six months to close my first note deal from when I got started. And I was really half-assing it at that point. I was still doing other things. I was like, oh, I'll do this. Nah. But when I got serious about it, oh, wait, there's the or. You have to do the things you want to do. The or, serious, okay? I think there's an O-R in that. <laughs> O-U-S, maybe. Is you have to realize, everybody, there's no O-R in serious, but you get what I'm talking about. Is that it's it takes time. It takes you showing up. It takes you being dedicated. It takes you doing the, the, the mundane things on a regular basis. And a lot of times in mundane, you can set up systems so they take care of that for you. They're gonna follow, you can follow up on things like that. Look, you, you can't sit around here and just send an email blast out once a month and then take a, a nap every day. It doesn't work that way. And there's people out there that are like, I want to be the laziest note investor out there. Well, it doesn't work that way. Note investments is this con it's constant mutating kind of rubber ball. Okay, tar baby ball, I guess you could say. There's things that you're gonna get stuck doing that you don't wanna do, but there's other things you can have other people do. And that's why we tell people all the time, like, listen, if you're gonna buy your first couple notes, yeah, you can put your systems in place, get them going for one, two or three notes. Don't buy a cheap note, don't buy a skinny deal. Move on to the next one, to the next one. How, how do we find the next one? You do more. I had somebody come to me, um, golly, this is just aggravating. She's like, I'm going to buy this note deal from this other investor. I'm like, wait a second. Why are you buying it from them? Well, I went online to this platform. I was like, okay. And what's your exit strategy going to be? Well, I'm going to try to get it modified. I'm like, wait a second. If that investor's had that deal for six to 12 months and they've not got it modified, I got it reperforming, you're sure as hell not going to get it reperforming. So why are you paying above 70, 75 cents of the dollar for that note when all your exit, your only exit strategy is really to foreclose? Look, go do some other deals. Go market somewhere else. Well, I don't want to. Uh, okay, don't do that deal. It's a, going to be a bad deal for you. You're overpaying. The only person that's going to get any money on this is the investor selling you the deal. There's always got to be a win-win. There's not a win-win. Don't do the deal. Well, I need real you to do a deal. Well, great. How much are you marketing to these other places? I mean, making phone calls. Well, I'm not doing any of that. Aha. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> We understand why they're not having success. All right. It shows up just like that. If they're not willing to do those little things, I don't want to do those other things. Well, then what are you doing here? Why are you showing up? Now, there's plenty of people, note investors out there that don't want to do a lot of work and they like the performing note side. They can buy a performing note. It's going to return cash flow to them on a regular basis. Okay, great. Totally fine. Stick to that. But there's a lot of people out there who oh, I want to make big returns. Great. To do big returns, to get higher returns, you've got to do more. Okay? You've got to do more work. Oh, you've got to do more. And that decision is ultimately up to you. And if you want to have a work ethic, great. Stick to it. Set goals. Set some limitations. Set some things, some numbers to you. KPIs. I'll tell you right now, making 50 phone calls in a day, you'll probably get 12 to 14 people you talk to. You'll probably get one to four lists out of those 50 if you follow up with them, okay, or out of those 14 you talk to, you know what you do the next day? Create the 14 you talk to, you replace those with 15 more people, okay? You can make phone calls Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. That's 150 phone calls. At the end of that week, you've probably talked to 45 people. Guess what? Add another 45, 50 people and call the other um, 100 people you didn't get to. Follow up with a second phone call to them. That's the only way you'll divide and conquer. I mean, there's so many asset managers out there. It'd be impossible for you to call every asset manager in the, in the book 
whether it's on Lane Guide or Distress Pro or um, Note Pros, you there's so many ways, so many different asset managers and contacts in the lending industry right now. You can't reach everybody. Well, you call and somebody else talk to rarely because most people aren't going to do that extra 5% more. They're not going to do that extra aspect of dialing for dollars. They might send an email blast out once, but they're not going to dial for dollars. They're not going to download Lane Guide. They're going to try to be cheap. If you want to cheapen your success, go right ahead and cheapen it. If you want to delay your success by six months or 12 months or by never, because you're constantly looking for the easiest and the least, least amount of work to do, that's great. Go do it somewhere else. Don't do it with me. So uh, once again, everybody, I know that you're many of you are out there looking for doing some things, you know, check out our, our note blueprint training, noteblueprint.com, or check out our upcoming virtual note buying class is this first week of December. We'd love to have you. Um, other than that, check out weclosednotes.com for our latest update of classes in the new year. It's up to you to define your success. So you can either do it or don't. And that's what more is all about. More is picking that, hey, I want more to take place. That means I'm going to do something other than what I'm doing right now. I'm going to do something more than what I'm doing on a daily basis. So go out there, put more in your corner to get more work done and get more done. And trust me, if you focus on that for 30, 60, 90 days, you look back and give yourself time to build those habits and be focused. Say no to other things. Say no to the shiny objects. Uh, you know, kill those squirrels. Um, you'll be a lot happier off in the long run by being focused. Learn to say no and say yes to getting work and more done in your daily basis. An hour extra a day. It doesn't have to be talking about, hey, I'm going to go from one job to another job. That's the last thing I want to do. But put in an hour. Put in two hours extra each day, and you'll get a lot further along than those that aren't going to do anything else there as well. So once again, Scott Carson here, host of the Note Closure Show. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. As always, go check it out. Go to weclosenotes.com. Uh, to listen, to watch. Um, you can also listen to the podcast on any of the, the channels available. I would really love it if you guys would do me a huge favor. I don't ask this very often, but if you head over to iTunes and leave a five-star review or head on over to LinkedIn, connect with me on there and leave me a recommendation. I would love that as well. So I can give you a shout out and be glad to give you a recommendation back as well too. So once again, thank you all for listening. Thank you for all of your support. Go out and have a great day and uh, do a little bit more and we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye. <laughs>